What is up, bitches? Welcome to another episode of Live on 3. I am your host, DJ Wheat, and joining me as always, Sir Scoots and Slasher, who is looking quite dapper today. But uh, gentlemen, the world is falling around us, and Angel Munoz is getting back in it. We have so much to talk about here today. How are, how are y'all doing? Big show, big show. Slasher late as always, Marcus, what else is new? But this is cute and all, this is fun, little memory lane. That theme song, Marcus, still gets me right in the gut, man. I love that shit. Blood pumps, yeah. But fuck it, Ian, it's my show now. I'm the captain, Marcus. Re-rack the goddamn show. Let's do this right. Welcome to The Breakdown, episode 9. I am Sir Scoots. It is March 11th, 2020. We got a barn burner of an episode. I do have DJ Wee with me. Not a live on 3 episode. You didn't hit a time machine there, folks. Many, many Wednesdays ago, live on 3. We're going to get right into it, though. We do have Marcus on the first half of the show. Going to talk to him about his life, but I also want to hit him with a couple of our news topics. Uh, again, we're going to try to do... Regular interviews when they make sense for the theme of the week. Uh, Marcus, old-time friend of mine, now the director of creators uh, of all things Twitch. Hello, my friend. How are you? Welcome to the show. I'm great, man. Thanks for thanks for having me. That was that was fun. I I thought maybe we were in the hot tub time machine for a second there, but uh, yeah, you pulled me out of it. Thanks a lot. Yeah, freaking. Uh, and again. No slasher, you know. I, I guess we should have invited him, maybe. I don't know. But yeah. He told me he'd be watching. So hi slasher. Right. Hey slasher. How are you, brother? I miss you. Call me. Call me. <laughs> Call me. Let's do lunch. So let's get right into it, Marcus. Um, first off, that yeah. was fun to do a little live on three bit. I know we've been talking about bringing it back. You've been talking about it. Then you got really, really mm -hmm. busy. You moved home to Nebraska, built a house, mm -hmm. moved the whole family home out of the Bay Area, back home. What are you up to these days? How's life in general before we get to the topics? Uh, <laughs> life's kind of crazy. Um, yeah, all those things you mentioned uh, have been, you know, it's been a joy to put Mini Wheat back in school. He was homeschooled in San Francisco and um, I've gotten a chance to to start streaming again. And, and then like, you know, I, we might talk about it later, but this thing called the coronavirus kind of hit and it, it's sort of like, it's, it's, it's imagine you've, you've got right. Your, your Google maps open and you think, you know, the destination you're going. And then it's like, Oh, we, we've just realized there's a detour. So you need to go left now and then go all the way around. Well, that's kind of what things feel like right now. Right. Unfortunately, we did have to cancel TwitchCon Amsterdam as a result of, of what is going on across the globe. And so, you know, it's, it's, they're, it's it's just been interesting times, Scoots, right? Because there uh, are now things that we can't do, right? E3 would have been uh, right there on my radar, but that one is uh, unfortunately now not happening as of this morning. So um, uh, what I am doing is at Twitch, as you mentioned, a director of creator development, still trying to help creators in whatever way I can, right? Like this isn't necessarily like setting up their OBS or getting their exploit working, but more so like how can we help creators thinking about their career over the next year and three years and five years? And I've got a real uh, vested interest in sort of ensuring that the industry of streaming remains healthy, that people have like job options beyond streaming if they choose to go that way and, and working and helping with talent. And so, as you know, that's something that I've done throughout kind of my entire esports e career. So it's been a lot of fun to, to do that, but I'm just also trying to live life. And I've recently gotten into a love that I haven't talked about a whole lot, but I've, I've, I've been playing a lot of pinball and, and picked up my first two pinball machines. And so that's been a lot of fun, like kicking my family's ass and teaching them how to play, but damn, they're getting good. So I got to <laughs> watch out. So you gotta get but that yeah, Adam's family machine, man. Got to get Adam's family. So yep. let's talk about, uh, the pandemic. It is now a sure. pandemic. The officially. CDC, yeah, officially made it a pandemic today, and they also dropped a public service announcement that we all should watch. So let's go ahead and watch that as well. And it's then game we'll over, about. man. It's game over. What the fuck are we gonna do now? <laughs> what are we gonna do? Oh God, we're gonna die. Don't you understand? 
We're all gonna die! <laughs> Pretty much sums it up right about now, huh? Oh, shit, yeah. So yeah. let, let uh, th so directly affects you. You know, you did mention, uh, you know, obviously a lot of mainstream events have been canceling. South by Southwest, now E3, uh, before that GDC. You guys had to make that tough decision. You know, TwitchCon mm -hmm. Amsterdam was going to be a big European presence for you guys. Obviously, Amsterdam, mm -hmm. great fun city. Uh, what was kind of the, the Twitch thought process? And obviously, I know you work very very day-to-day -day on all things TwitchCon. So like, how is that for the team? Uh, any plans to do something different instead? Kind of fill us in with what you can talk about. Uh, I mean, what I can talk about is that it was a hard decision. As you can imagine, right? This isn't just Twitch. This isn't just GDC or South by Southwest, right? These are these are difficult decisions, especially, right? They they affect the attendees. They affect um, the uh, the vendors. They affect the community members that wanted to come. They affect the ambassadors that have been chosen for this. So, I mean. It, it really doesn't matter what event you're talking about. Like these are really, really tough decisions for any teams. And, and if there's one thing that I would, you know, say to the, the, the audiences out there is that, you know, these people are just keeping your best interest in mind. And obviously, as you can imagine, a lot of it is driven by like what other companies and organizations are doing as well. Um, we also are owned by Amazon, right? So they rightfully so have a say because they want to keep people safe as well, including their own employees and, 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 and creators, et cetera. So, um, it, it's been, it's been hard because as you can imagine, um, if, you know, Scooch, you were writing a book, and you're like, hey, we, I've got, here's, here's my book. It's, it's, you know, going to be a thousand pages and I've got 600 pages written and I like put it through the shredder. That would suck, right? Like all that work that you just did, it's not going to, it's, it kind of, it feels a little bit that way. Right. So as far as like plans, um, uh, nothing's been announced yet. Um, mm. I, I'm not really at Liberty to, to talk about it. Um, but you know, as you've, as you've seen other organizations, like everyone's looking for what solutions are there. Right. I think like to, to kind of like sidetrack a little bit, like the streaming industry is in an interesting spot because the coronavirus does something, um, that, is like keeping people indoors. So guess what? As a content creator, <laughs> you can do that from your house. Guess yeah, what? As a yeah. viewer, you can do that from your house. So like in a very weird and sort of obtuse way, there is something uh, positive to take out of all of this. And that is, is that this sort of quarantine that, that we're uh, dealing with either imposed or self-imposed, um, that means that right. Digital content and the consumption of that content is, is, it's going to be something that a lot of people are probably going to do to find news, to get entertainment, et cetera. So um, I'm not worried that much about sort of this world that we live in because um, that's kind of like the perfect climate for everyone, right? I mean, to put it into to, to retrospect, like, right, this happens in the winters. People are home from vacation. They get snowed in, right? Like more viewers come for more creators. And it, it's like, it's kind of similar. And I don't mean to make light of the situation, but hopefully to like give a positive spin uh, on sort of how this is all affecting us. Yeah, it's a little bit of that, like, you know, silver lining in a cloud, right? If there's one right. positive. And, and, and Rod, speaking of Slasher, uh, several weeks ago when it was still kind of isolated in China and it was a China problem. He was on, I want to say, Yahoo Finance, one of those news shows, and he was kind of mm -hmm. talking about the effects on the Chinese economy and the cancellation of the Overwatch homestands over there. But he kind of alluded to the same thing as like, there's all the negative, but the bonus is more people stay home, the more they watch the streaming services, the more they play video games, and that kind of bumps the numbers up on that side that maybe... Uh, you know, a little artificial inflation on that because more people right. are home, like you said, right? Um, yeah. How do you feel? I know you had a long uh, stream and you kind of had a whole talk to your chat uh, kind of about the virus. What are your thoughts on it? Are we over? Is the media like panicking? Or are they causing sure. us to panic? Or is sure. this a general concern in your world? Yeah, so I've actually done two of them now, um, and I originally did one on Monday as sort of an effort to, um, you know, I was really interested in having a, a global conversation, right? One of the amazing things about a platform like Twitch is that 
you know, someone is watching from Italy where they are now under emergency lockdown and they don't have to leave their house in order to call me up and, and contribute to the show. So um, being able to sort of do that and hear from people who worked at MSP and who are from the Netherlands and who are experiencing thing in, in Germany and talk to someone in Australia today, um, I find that super fascinating. So I am going to continue to do that. Um, and uh, you can find those VODs over on my channel. Um, but uh, to answer your question, Scoots, I have been very upfront and open about my position um, on the, the coronavirus. And, and um, I think that that's good to provide that context. First and foremost, um, I'm scared shitless and I am being extremely cautious. But when I say that, I say the following is that I would rather laugh at myself in three months then regret it forever. And mm -hmm. so I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you need to be as, as overly cautious as I might be. I'm reading everything. I've been following this since the, the, the early reports and, um, it, that came out of Wuhan. Um, I've obviously taken even more of an interest as it, as it's, you know, affected the United States and now even hit close to home and has been identified in my son's school district. So, um, you know, I want to do these streams to keep people aware, to have an intelligent and respectful discussion about what's happening, and also in a way to like document it for myself, right? To, yeah. to, to be able to look back on this after however long it takes and go, this is what people were feeling. This is how we were reacting. Maybe this was a, something we weren't thinking about that later on, like two weeks later became a thing. So um, I'm, you know, I'm worried because I also have a wife who has severe asthma and mm -hmm. I also have older parents who, you know, if they were to contract this, they are in the age demographic in which the mortality rates are higher. So I don't regret and I don't have any problem if people want to be like, we, you're out of your freaking mind. Like this is stupid. You're overreacting. Cool. I'll be the yeah, first yeah. to admit I'll get on Twitter and be like, yep, you were right. I overreacted. But like right now, I'm feeling pretty justified in a lot of my comments and in a lot of my own efforts. And I don't want to feel that way. But again, I just want to help unify people to get the right information to like have a world perspective on this because we are so dealing with this either in the U S or in Italy or in Australia. And I think that has been really amazing to me is to like hear how, what other people are going through and, and what they're hearing and how their media is handling it. Because right now, 75% of what we're seeing is, is, is coronavirus in the United States. The other 25% is the, the fact that it's an election year, real yeah, exactly. weird shit to be going on, yeah. dude. real weird stuff. So, um, you know, do I think we're overhyping this? No, I think we need to get as much information out there as possible. I think that it's very clear based off the events that are being canceled based off of some of the quarantines that are happening that, you know, we're still in for a ride. Like the race just started, ladies and gentlemen. So. Yeah. And, and I think, uh, again, I think your, your, your tact of better safe than sorry is, is, is the win-win of this, of the situation, right? I feel the exact same way. Like if I get it, I'm probably going to be fine. I'll be sick for a couple of weeks. I'll get through it. But I have a 90 year old mom who has emphysema. So she is lung capacitated, if you will. Right. She already right. has a pre-existing condition. So like it could literally kill her. Right. Um, at one point I was canceling my own trip to Gamers Forgiving, which is a charity event that Gamers Outreach does every year in Michigan. We have since canceled the entire event anyway, but I was like, I'm not going guys because if I catch something there and bring it home to mom, like, that's, fuck me, right? Like, exactly fuck me. Um, yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people need to kind of have that next level of thought is, yeah, I'm a young buck. I'm going to be fine. I've been sick before. But who else are you going to come in contact to that you might actually pass it on to that you do real damage to, right? Um, You're absolutely right. Excuse. I mean, like we can do everything ourselves to like protect, but this is a, this is a human problem, right? Like we can't predict how other humans are going to act or the precautions that they may or may not take. So um, I think to, to, you know, to your point, they even said earlier, like it, we're at a point now where it's likely that everyone will know someone who either is related to or has a friend that that will have a death related to the coronavirus. Like it doesn't seem like with the amount of deaths there are that that you know that could even be the case, but 
Um, it, it's, it's possible, right? Again, would love to look back and look at this clip and go like, we yeah. was spitting some craziness, but at the end of the day, I urge people to, to just not have put themselves in a position where they're like carrying that regret forever. So exactly. Like I said, better safe than sorry. Stay home. If you're not better safe well. than sorry, you know, keep everyone else home if they're not feeling well. Um, so a couple other things, I think Jason just told me in my ear that NAB is officially canceled. Um, oh, NAB got canceled? Really? Did you really? say NAB, Jason? Yes, NAB got canceled. And what I had read this morning was that ESL Pro League, which was going to take place with teams in Malta, has now been shifted to online only. No, because Malta has some cases now. So the government of Malta is locking down in and out of that country a little bit well, more. So Scoots, it sounds like that's going to go online now. I've got a I, – so I have one prediction – that will, I think, benefit esports, right? Because there's no doubt, like, right, over the last few years, the big thing's been, oh, state, we're filling stadiums. We've got, like, these massive World Cups happening, and, and this is awesome, right? And we're going to get back to that, right? Just because we yeah. have a pause, and that doesn't mean that we're not going to go back to that. So, like, right now, the the sort of, like, visionary in me is, like, it's the time for grassroots to shine again, right? Like we live in a world of online gaming where it is hypothetically possible for us to still be bringing competitions, to be doing these things. And like, yes, there might be pauses, but we don't have to stop the community efforts of doing a diabolical cup or throwing yeah. another counter-strike competition. So like, I really hope that this sort of like brings some life back to at home, grassroots, you know, fuck it, we'll do it live type stuff that, that could, you know, we've always, we, you and I know firsthand, like how beneficial that can be to communities, to esports, etc. cetera. Um, so, you know, like, I really hope yeah. that that's something that comes out of it. Well, it's like you said, we have, we have something very easy to fall back on how we all started. Right. Whereas right. what happens if the NBA starts canceling basketball games, right? They have no, they're going to fall back on games without fans, but then what happens when they can't even feel like, like they don't want anyone in the arena, right? What if, so like at least our sports have this kind of old world to fall back on. Right. Um, and I think you're right. I think we'll, we'll get through it. Everything will come back eventually once we get through the pandemic. Um, so let's move on. I wanted to talk sure. to you a little, a little bit about Overwatch League. Not so much about, you know, franchise system, good, bad. You know, we, we could go around and around on that kind of stuff. But I wanted to get your uh, your kind of feedback on this ban system they put in place. Because you're a competitive yeah. integrity kind of guy. Um, ladder guy versus pro league kind of guy. So, to bring you up to speed, if you're not familiar, they do Overwatch bans every week for the league. That they, they ban based on uh, most used heroes, then get randomized, and they ban but then they decided to start banning on their ladder. That's cool. What's not cool, and is what I want your thought process on, two different sets of bands, not the same. And then we've got some players who tweeted about it saying, kind of a bad idea. Now it's even you know worse place for us to practice because pros do go into this matchmaking system to work right. on aim, work on tactics, work on movement mechanics, all sorts of stuff, right, when they're not scrimmaging. What are your thoughts uh -huh. on two separate bands? Um, uh, <laughs> uh, I can, I can drop F bombs on this show, right? Yes, please do. Well, that's fucking yes. stupid. Like why, how does that, how does that make any sense at all? Um, and I feel for these players, right? Like that, that, it, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now I, you know, let's, let's play the role of like, well, what is Blizzard's thought process through that? Or what is the, the owl league's thought process? And maybe that's like a way to gather more data, based off of right but like then then you're talking about gathering data in a ladder capacity which is not the pro you know meta or necessarily and so it just it doesn't make sense to me and like frankly wouldn't it be more interesting like would you as a ladder player take more interest if your bands matched up to what was being played in the pro league right and you, maybe you're like oh i maybe i'll tune into owl to see yes. how these teams are dealing with the fact that lucio and winston are, are banned from this thing right like that that seems to make a lot of sense to me so you know I, no it makes zero uh, it makes weird, zero right? sense to me. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's very weird. And, and again, like we've always like 
forever in esports, whenever there's been conversations about pro modes for a game or uh, a different division of the game for the pros, it's always been the mantra, we want the pros and the regular players to play the exact same game because they help each other. If right. the kid at home is playing the exact same game as the pros he's watching, it gives him a path, right, of like, oh, but if it's a totally different game, then it's like, oh, I'm not, I don't even play that game, you know? So right. it's just... In the I land mean, of like Valorant coming their way, right? That is going to knock on the door of Overwatch, like it's going to knock on Counter Strike's door a little bit. This, these kind of decisions just like push your player base away from your game. It, it just makes no sense to me. Like I don't get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and if you think about it in relation to like, if you apply the same thing, let's let's use StarCraft too, right? Like we, you know, here's the map pool for yeah. every competition that's going to come out. We've also banned that same map pool from, you know, so exactly. you can't even practice with it. That, again, that it makes no sense. It, one does not lead to the other. And if anything, I you would think that this is an aspirational moment to like create a sense of like, I'm playing in the same ways that the pros are, just like you mentioned with the pro mods, et cetera. So yeah, yeah. really um, doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And it, I find it even harder pill to swallow because it's like, you know, it's not like you don't have 20 years of like history to look at like why this might be a bad idea. Um, so yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. Just a weird one. Um, that's a weird one. Um, let's move on to a game that, uh, we're both excited about. I know you're really excited about it. Um, you dusted man, off, you, you, you dusted off your microphone for this one. Let's start with a little bit of DJ wheat. Doing a little bit of shout casting. Let's start with it's like this. one of the biggest. Oh, that that kind of sucks. He was gonna try to rocket jump his way. Oh, we got the we got the ever so famous mouse shake. When you know that a bunch of people are watching you and you fuck up and so you shake your mouse. God damn it! I've missed Arena FPS. Where have you been? Overwatch. You haven't fucking been doing for me. You're pretty fucking boring. Apex. <laughs> your movement was decent, but you're not in an Arena FPS. God damn it! It feels good to be home again. <laughs> oh, are, we home? are we home again? Dude, so, so, so much. Um, I think, like, you talk to any pro, right? Like, and this is, this is where I think it gets real interesting, right? Like, arena FPS players, specifically Quake players, right? We've been chasing the dragon for a long time, Scoots, <laughs> right? Like, they tried to give us Painkiller. They tried to give us Shoot Mania. They tried to give us Quake Champions. And the problem was is that Quake 3 set a bar so damn high because the engine was phenomenal for what the game was. Mm -hmm. And so here comes a game, Diabotical, that immediately you play this and you're like, Oh shit, this feels good. Right? Like I didn't, e I moved my mouse three inches and I'm like, Holy shit. Like we're here. This is it. And then you start <laughs> playing it and then you're like, Oh my God, this, right. This, this feels like the arena FPS engines that, that made us fall in love with it in the first place. And to, to go one step further, like the team, you know, the entire good studio, um, they, they like actually have put, different like pitch and yaw uh changes in there so like if you want this to feel more like quake 3 mm. put this value in and it will and it does if you want it to feel more like uh fortnite you can put this in and it and it will and it does so um it it's like oh man it's like a brick to the face because a it's amazing that this game feels as awesome as it does it's amazing that like you can pick it up and feel like you were just transported years ago where we were playing quake three and, and on servers together um and and you know like frankly the team that's working on it they know this game type and this style of game really well um so uh, like shit, man, I can't say enough good things about it. Like it gets my blood pumping in a major way. And I think like what I said at the end there is true. Like I've not felt that that way. Like I have had fun. Don't get me wrong with many BRs and shooters and I have had fun, but like this game has gotten me to come back. And this game has been like, Oh man, I got 30 minutes between my next meeting. Like I can pop in and I can play <laughs> a couple games. Right. Like that to me, that says a lot just based off my own sort of um, yeah. behaviors and my own um, 
uh, you know, ways that I have been playing games and, and what I like to play, et cetera. So, you know, it obviously it still comes down to player base, right? Like, are we going to get all the players in? Are we going to see? And the, and what I really say to that scoots is like what the good studio has done well is first off that engine, that engine is, is it's a beautiful engine. Um, second of all, they've come up with an art style that I feel like is acceptable by the old generation and the new generation. And that is something that yeah. I feel like is much, much more difficult to actually accomplish. And, you know, I, I, I quite like it, right? Like a lot of, a lot of pros from the old will be like, this looks like I'm playing a pick me quake game right because like quake and its full engine looked nice and gritty and stuff but everyone actually on a competitive level played it sort of soft and muddy just to yeah. get that ultimate smoothness out of it so you've already got that kind of built in anyway i'm 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 over so, the moon about this man i it's great okay so much like starcraft is a challenging thinky game right as i always say it, it, right. it limits it limits the casual player base from the get-go when you've got harder games, right? So he, if, if they've made the game, if the game is solid, the modes are solid, everything about it is solid, how, how do they tackle that problem of getting mainstream or closer to mainstream acceptance of gamers to play what is often a very frustrating, no participation award trophy kind of game? Like, it can be brutal to play arena shooters when you're not good, right? Um, so how do they tackle that? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I've got a couple different answers. First of all, right, like I think that games like Fortnite, games like Overwatch, um, they've done a good job of like bringing FPS players, new FPS players into the fold, right? Because like previously, it was either a BR or it was like Counter-Strike and like, you know, like not saying that those aren't okay, but right. They, it brought the arcadiness of FPSs back a little bit. Right. Um, so I think that just because of kind of the status quo of where we're at, um, you've got to imagine that like we, I've seen, I've seen some Fortnite bros have amazing aim, right? Like amazing, amazing aim, but you know what, what they lack some movement, right? So mm -hmm. uh, what I hope is that these players will at least give it a chance to see like, Oh wow. Right. Because like what makes these great players is like people who like, wow, this game is fun. I want to get better at it. I want to beat more people at it. I want to rank higher in it. Right. So like, fuck, if you're really looking for that, a game like Diabotical is the best place because you're going to, you're going to never hit the ceiling ever, ever, ever. It won't happen. Um, you know, like I would hope that like some of the, the Fortnite players are going to like play this and be like, damn, like I don't have to build anything. Like this is fun. I can like use this natural aim that I've got. And so, you know, like I don't have the answer to that because if I did, I'd work on, the marketing <laughs> team of Diabotical and every other fucking FPS marketing team in the world because I think it's the hardest challenge they got. If you want to know one of the smartest marketing strategies that I have seen so far is slasher playing against yeah. new school FPS players. Hunter Buck. Because it brings them in. It shows them the competitive aspect of, of like what this game can be. And it gives them a challenge. And believe it or not, I'm like sitting back. I'm like, yo, this shit's brilliant because that's a great way to get right. These Fortnite players yeah. and their fans to look at this game and to do so my hats off to uh, everyone who's like kind of working and, and, and all that slasher did lose by the way, the other day to a Fortnite player lose. whose fucking yep. rail yep. was a crazy. But when I watched him move, he looked like a little baby crawling around the, you know, so like, I, you know, I, I laugh, but I'm like, I was, I was even in, um, um, I forget who it was now. I'm, I apologize, but I was in his channel. I was like, bro, if you could learn to move, you'd be fucking good at it. You'd be really good at this game. Mm. So maybe that will happen, right? Maybe this yeah. slow burn of the betas and the excitement around every weekend is really a great strategy to get us to where people want to try it out. The next part is scoots is it's ranked, right? Is like, can this game measure people based off of their performance and make sure that they're matched up with people? Cause like, frankly, when you're a good 
quake diabolical player, whatever, you don't want to play shit tier players yep. like you do in other games, right? In in PUBG, I want to play shit tier players all the time. I don't want to play <laughs> god tier players because I'm not a god tier player. But like it, right when you're a shit tier player in these games, you want to play shit tier people because that's what's going to improve you the quickest, right? You want to play someone just a little bit better than you. So yep. I don't know, man. I, I'm excited. Can, can Is that a problem that can be easily solved? I don't, but like I'll do everything I can to, to, to bring awareness and, and hopefully get people to look at this. And, and as it moves closer to the esports, you know, big stage and people can really see the excitement, the golden frag, by the way, is, is incredible. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I'm really, yeah. uh, Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm excited for it. Definitely excited to hear you uh, doing some casting of it. So hope we hear more of that. Yeah. And yeah, I think what, what like Fish Sticks is doing with the, getting the cups going and Slasher having fun. It, again, it's probably the right organic way to kind of push this game and keep growing this game. So knock on wood that yep. it uh, continues to kick ass. I know you've got an 1130 meeting, so I won't hold you. I do. I'm going to give you final thoughts, wrap up your part of the show. Marcus, thank you again for coming on. What do you want to tell the world? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, thanks for, you know, thanks for watching, supporting, uh, uh, the breakdown, do not peak, uh, all of the esports efforts that are going on out there. Um, you can find me on my stream, twitch.tv slash DJ wheat, which is now almost a, you know, coronavirus stream for the next, uh, foreseeable future. I do play games over there too. Um, but, uh, as you mentioned, I, I really want to support diabolical. I had a lot of fun. I kind of felt like I was sitting in a seat, you know, like 16 years later that I was in. Um, so expect me casting, um, and, and you know what, doing some like old school casting, right? Like that was the thing that I especially liked is that I didn't have to, you know, necessarily shout out a sponsor other than juke. Good yeah. job. Uh, but right. Like I, I got to shout cast, like I used to shout cast in, in like the late nineties, early two thousands. And that's what excites me. I want to bring that back again. Um, and so I hope that you'll follow along and, 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 uh, tune in and, you know, other than that, Thanks for uh, thanks for having me, DMP crew, and uh, uh, yeah, I hope you have a great show. Cool, thank you, brother. Much love as always to Marcus. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we got a lot more to talk about. Great having Marcus on the show. Really like that he's getting back into doing some casting as well. Be right back after the break. Second half of the show coming your way. <laughs> 